And next up is Cassie. Okay, so how many people here have had a relationship that ended up going completely down in flames, like never return, never ever patch up? Anyone? Okay, well, I just got done with one of those relationships and it's only been until recently that I've been getting over it and so this has been, this is sort of basically my dialogue. Mike, stop laughing. All right, this is called What I Couldn't Say. Also, I'm terrified to bear with me for a moment. The moments the words left me, so did the smile on your face. You asked me why, and I gave you no real answer, no real reason. I'd attempted before to make you see why I wanted our intimate relationship to die. I thought as friends, we were ten times better. For two and a half years, we spent growing closer together. But you wanted something more, something for a while I wasn't willing to give. But as Friday the 13th in February came, it was my heart and a dagger with it I handed to you. I gave you what you wanted, me, mind and heart, but no way would I give you my body right at the start. Little did I know I was suing the, qu the quilt to my own end. But backing you up and hearing your loyalty and defending me made me think we might be able to make it. As summer hit, our time together grew and grew. All I wanted was to spend my time with you. And eventually I got my wish, from dawn till dusk, doing insane things such as chasing storms while tornado sirens blared, feeling high and giddy when they would start again after dying, going random places, taking back country roads. The towns nearby and even far away, the entire state was our playground. It was our per paradise, our own slice of perfection and reality. But nothing lasts forever. As our time together continued, so did your views of the, of the future telling me your thoughts of what was to come to us. I began to grow wary, fearful of your image of me shattering, breaking us apart by speaking against you. I remember once I attempted to show you. You got no idea the amount of pressure you're putting on me, man. You asked for an elaboration saying you thought we'd work out, that this was the best relationship you ever had. I tried to explain, but nothing in my mind seemed to be able to tell you that I doubted we would last, that I loved you but was slowly seeing it wasn't the type you so desperately ached for. I thought it was me that was feeling wrong and swore to myself I would work to make it last. I shoved my doubt in the back of my mind and worked to find a way to make myself better. For me, for you. But with the absence of my doubt, other feelings came in their place. Annoyance of how you seemed to ignore me at times. Irritation at how you insisted after the first time I continued to kiss you. The first time I did, I found it to be highly over-exaggerated and even disgusting. I found it wet and warm, the smell of whatever you had eaten before brushing against my face. I remember when I told you about it too. I don't like kissing, leaving anywhere on me, from you, out of the statement. I remember all too clearly as you flashed me that grin of yours, telling me with the reassurance you would use with some naive child, you'll get used to it. If there was a God, I would have prayed to it that you were right. I swore again that I would try and make it work. Despite my efforts, nothing changed. I remained disgusted by kissing you. Every time you hug me, though, as a solution, you take your attention, your lips' attention to my neck. You cling a little longer and keep your hips to mine every time we embraced. Then when I tried to separate, you hold me a few seconds longer than necessary. I noticed these changes soon after they began. I was too late to keep them fucking up if I tried to fix them, though. Too afraid I would lose your trust if I didn't give you something to keep grasp to. Instead of stopping the situation, I found myself conforming to it. The time when I was with you, but away from contact of you, was glorious. I became annoyed when you would start to hug me from behind, kiss my neck fully against me. My toleration for such things grew less and less, though. Perhaps it seemed like I was playing hard to get, but you ignore the frown on my neck or the rubbing of the frown on my face or the rubbing on my neck where your saliva made itself home. But still, I thought, maybe it's just me. But then you did the inexcusable. You had been my everything as my friend, my confidant, my companion, my shoulder to cry on. But you were the one I had told my most dark and hard thoughts to. And in return, all I asked for, all I asked for was that you use me in the same roles of your life. Maybe it was because I stopped, you did as well. But my excuse of fearing our friendship ending is more valid than yours, old friend. 
My things, my things were involving you and my doubt, my fear, my thoughts that we, would, we were better as friends. Clearly we were, as you stopped telling me what was bothering you, having nothing to do with me. You started telling another source who I'd get my information from. When I finally brought it up in a conversation, you said you didn't want to bother me. For three years, I had promised you I would always listen to your troubles and help you. Three years? And you start to doubt the status of my ears, thinking I would not listen when I clearly asked, what's wrong to you? Fulfilling my end of our handshake sealed promise. Ha! Next time I do so with anyone, I will demand blood. It's said to be stronger. It's funny to think back and consider the events. That I would not send you telling another your troubles more than you not catching my hints that I wanted you to stop insisting contact, or that if I wanted contact in our relationship that I could sit or lay with my top off could change in front of you and you would make no advancement. You ignored all the other times. Why those did you decide to listen? My doubt was no longer back, no longer lingering, but in full fucking force in my mind. But for some really, really silly reason, I still blame myself. Maybe it's me. If only I... Nearing the first attempt to break it off, though, there were other doubts, other thoughts. If he touches me on the cheek like he's stroking a cat one more time, I swear I'll... This isn't going to last. I knew it would hurt, no matter how I did it. I didn't want to stop all contact. I loved you, but not in the way you or I wished. I saw no happily ever after or realization of how I was stupid and you were the best damn thing in my life. How if I didn't have you, I would die. I did not see you dying without me either. I only saw and felt one thing. It had to end, if only temporary. I had tried three days before I broke it off completely, asking you to let me go if only for a little bit telling you for the period of our upcoming trip, I merely want to be friends. When we came back, we'd be in full swing. That's unacceptable, was all you told me, telling me afterwards, please don't go, please, don't. Low voices, pleading, begging. It plays on my heart and you were victorious. I compromised that we start from square one, try again. For you, it seemed like a chance for you to show me who was in charge. For me, I had decided I would dance this dance with you one more time, but if I was still in doubt when our trip was done, I was leaving you. When I left your car, you told me you loved me. I simply would smile and tell you, you too, before watching you drive with a smile on your face. I'm too fucking nice, rang through my mind. Too weak, too damn easily persuaded. Three days later, we started our trip anew. But our beginning was stalled, just like our breakup was. Perhaps it was for the best, though, because once you and me and our friend Chris got in your car, you got worse. You hinted I didn't listen to you. You clung on to me even after I separated from you, jumping at any chance to hold on to me, even if my arm was shoving you away. Bitching at my insistence for you to fill your debt to me about a bet, uh, about a bet you lost. But for me to say on that Saturday, or was it Sunday, of our weekend trip, that was what made me snap finally, I would be lying. It was when you began to fill out and flip out over the smallest things. Like a crack at how when your shirt's tucked in your belt and it's puffed out because it's not fully tucked in, you look like you have a beer belly, like everyone who has made that same mistake of doing such does. It was when you bought me glow sticks for a rave and demanded or forcibly hinted that I make out with you though I already kissed you twice on your face for them. It was the fit you threw when you said you'd take them back and I told you to go right the fuck ahead. It was your refusal to go to the rave with us because I didn't compromise for the glow sticks. It was you showing at the rave anyways, playing with a glow stick in the corner, later telling all you knew it was so you'd find a way to approach me, thinking I'd be mad at you for, not showing at the, for you showing at the rave. Oh, I was pissed. Just like every other time, you thought me as shallow as others had. I was angry because you thought I'd be pissed at you for not coming to the rave. I was angry, if it makes sense, because you did not come to me. You did not say you were coming anyways, in which I would have been thrilled, as I know dancing's not your thing. I did not care if you didn't come. I was with Chris. I was with friends. Your absence, while annoying me, did not offend me. Your lie, your presence, completely infuriated me. And it was time to end all this bullshit. I was done. I left the rave, sitting at the wall, Chris beside me, taking the glow sticks I, had I was now disgusted to have. My mind hazy with anger and determined as we spoke in angry and hushed voices. I told Chris everything. I told her what I wanted to do. I told her how our relationship I was attempting to end, how I had tried to before. 
She told me to think of a situation that would make us end peacefully, make it hurt less and let there be something remain. I was all for it. The, the subconscious of my mind brought up everything kept inside to the surface and made it come to life. There was no I want as I was staring at your approaching form. There was nothing in me but five simple words. I'm breaking up with you. The moment the words left me, so did the smile on, my, on your face. You asked me why and I gave you no real reason or answer. I had attempted before to make you see why I wanted our intimate relationship to die. Thank you.